You're watching ACC Basketball on ACC Network Extra. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside historic Cameron Indoor Stadium. Alongside former Duke All-American Gerald Henderson, I'm Ryan Craig, getting ready for Furman and Duke. The Blue Devils, number one in the country in both the AP and coaches poll. If they're going to move to 5-0, and they're going to have to stop Devin Sibley, the Conference Player of the Year in the SoCon a year ago, preseason Conference Player of the Year this year. Averaged almost 18 points a game a season ago for the Paladins. On the other side, the Blue Devils will feature a number of talented freshmen, including the ACC Rookie of the Week in Wendell Carter Jr., coming off back-to-back double-doubles. 12 points, 12 rebounds against Michigan State, 20 and 11 against Southern. And Gerald, he's part of an established front court already for the Blue Devils that Furman is going to have to contend with tonight. Oh, yes, and they'll have to block them out. Duke a plus 12 and a half rebounding margin against their opponents this year. When shots go up, hit your man and go grab the basketball. And they'll also have to handle Duke's pressure. Look for Duke to play a lot of man-to-man -to -man tonight. So they'll have to take care of the basketball. Don't get rattled. And on the Duke side, it'll be about getting back on track. They didn't play well against Southern on Friday. And look for them to follow the lead of their captain, Grayson Allen. Ten points, three or nine shooting on Friday. Look for him to get started early here tonight. Ready for the opening tip. Four freshmen and a senior, as it has been for the Blue Devils throughout the year. Five upperclassmen for the Paladins. Three seniors, two juniors. Already you see some of the experience disparity in favor of the Paladins, but the size advantage very much in favor of the Blue Devils, and we will re-tip it. The second came off the clock. They'll reset it to 20. It's Bagley and Rafferty on the tip. Trayvon Duvall stepped on the baseline. And you so, don't see that a lot. No, you do not. A turnover, I guess technically a turnover on the opening tip. I guess Bagley's a little excited to play. <laughs> Rifled that one into the backcourt. <laughs> and so the Paladins will have the opening possession. There's a look at Marvin Bagley, the third. ACC co-player of the week a week ago and was the rookie of the week. Unbelievable debut for him in a Duke uniform. And there is Sibley. That'll take it baseline out of bounds. And we'll go back the other way. So we played four seconds and had two turnovers. So there you go. Duke's pressure even on the under out of bounds. Pressure in the basketball. Denying everything to the corner there. Get a turnover. And we see the starting five for the Blue Devils. Led by Grayson Allen. Averaging more than... 21 points a game thus far in the young season. Bagley going to work in the paint. Lefty hook shot, no good. Carter keeps it alive temporarily. Go back to Furman. You're going to see that all game. Duke looking to find the post. He outsized this team by a lot. He'll get it in there. Offensive rebound as well. Saw Coach Bob Ritchie there a second ago in his first season as the head coach. has been on staff for now seven years. Was an assistant the previous half dozen. That one's poked away. Here is Bagley. Trickles over the rim. Referee says no touch from Trent. No offensive interference. 2-0 Blue Devils. Well, we might have to get a replay on that one. <laughs> Looks like Trent might have tapped that one. Anytime a player holds back his arms like that, usually that means he did something. He's guilty. Here's Davis. Coach Ritchie saying that he hasn't seen a guy improve from freshman to senior year like Davis has, and he hits the short jumper. Duvall into the paint. Duvall right back at Davis. Here's Davis one more time. Duvall has scored well this year, but he's also facilitated 34 assists through four games. Seven seconds on the shot clock. The three from Brown is good. Feet set right at the end of the shot clock there. Was ready to shoot. Knocks it down from the perimeter. Great shot there. Paladin shooting 37% as a team this year from distance. Brown, a 44% three-point shooter. That number goes up slightly as that one is off of Bagley. And then touched by Furman. See, Brown knocks that shot down. This is what the Paladins do. They shoot threes. Duke's got to stay composed there at the end of the shot clock. Don't lose your men. 
Brown hit 11 threes in a row at one point last year over the span of three games. The ball into the paint. There's that righty short jumper. Four quick points for Trayvon Duvall, the freshman. Fowler loses the handle just a bit. Referee says it was deflected away by Carter. Here is Sibley. Fowler into the paint as that one rejected by Carter. Big fella moving his feet, running the floor. Wendell Carter is fouled. The blocking foul on Sibley. First foul for either team. And it's always an advantage when your big men can move their feet. Blocked there by Carter. He follows it by running down the floor, drawing a foul at the other end. It's the 14th block already. Wendell Carter this season leads the ACC in that category. And he'll get called for going over the back on the offensive glass. And that's okay. That's okay. He gets in there being aggressive with the boards, and that's, you know, that's what Duke does as well. First team foul on the Blue Devils. In steps Clay Mounts, who made his debut, collegiate debut against Butler in Furman's last game. He's been out about a month with a hernia, redshirted a year ago. Perhaps the most athletic player on their roster. That one is laid in on the reverse by Sibley. And Furman takes the one-point lead. They may find a few more of those this game as well as Duke tries to pressure both on the ball and on the perimeter. Play on top and run your man back door. Allen the bounce pass to Carter. How about the active hands that time by Sibley? Paladin's back in transition. Brown thought about a three. Instead dumps it down low. Righty lay-in is good from Rafferty. Carter gets away with a double dribble on the end. Creeping toward the under-16 timeout. Paladin's by three in the early going. Allen into the paint. Can't finish with the left hand. Carter the offensive rebound. That's precisely what Coach Ritchie was worried about. It's what you talked about as one of the keys to the game. How often can Duke retrieve its own misses? The floater that time from Davis is good. Fairly little, uncontested that time. Yeah, little fella gets in there, shoots his nice floater. When you're small like that, you got to have all those shots. We don't have Spatola in here to tell us not to shoot the floater. And Chris Spatola called a couple of games with us earlier in the year. Not a fan of the floater. Gerald, an ardent defender of that shot. Grace Allen it. retrieves another offensive rebound, but then steps out of bounds. 15.40 to go. We've reached the under-16 timeout. The Paladins with a three-point lead. Davis penetrates here. Finds his man back door. Nice finish. Back inside Cameron Indoor Stadium alongside Gerald Henderson. I'm Ryan Craig. Paladins by three in the early going. And Gerald, you talked about Furman having to deal with Duke's pressure, and they've done so admirably thus far. And they've done well. They've got two turnovers, but Davis has penetrated, got past the pressure, got to his shot, and then also has found his teammates on cut. So look for them to do that. they got to be able to take care of the ball while they're doing all these things. But as Duke pushes up on you, you got to push back. Number of points in the paint already. You would expect that from the Blue Devils. They have eight. Furman also has eight. That is perhaps unexpected. Let's see if the Blue Devils can make the appropriate adjustment there. They've gone to the bench, substituted both of their post players, Javin Delorier on, as is Marquise Bolden. Grayson Allen comes away with the defensive board. Duvall off balance with the right hand. Here is Davis, unafraid. The Paladins here at Cameron Indoor Stadium picked to win the Southern Conference by the media this year. Preseason number three, according to the coaches. 
Duvall skies for the defensive rebound. Trying to hit ahead to DeLaurier. Those are the decisions. It. Those are the decisions there Duvall has to get better at. You know, a young point guard came down, had the one foot runner, lets a low percentage shot, and there tries to find DeLaurier on a tough pass ahead. He'll get better as those as, as he keeps playing. He has been playing well so far this season. Yeah, Duvall has been excellent in that regard. Not the best decision there that time. Does lead the ACC in assist to turnover ratio at almost six at this point in the season. But he'll take a seat. Jordan Goldwire will run the point now for Duke. Grayson Allen still scoreless thus far. 0 for 2 from the field. Laurier looking for Bolden. Active hands, though, that time from Mounts. Stop and pop three. Off the heel. Might have been a two, depending on where his feet were, according to the line. Watch out for Lyons. He comes in, jacking it. A scorer coming off the bench. All freshman team a year ago in the SOCON. Davis guarded by Grayson Allen. Don't leave shooters. Six seconds on the shot clock. Beautiful look inside and a wide open Jalen Williams with the finish. Second time that Furman has found something late in the shot clock. Well, there you go. Duke didn't leave their shooters, but they came into a pick and roll. Nobody picked up the roll, man. They get an easy layup. Furman by five. As Trent gets in the paint, able to finish inside. Speaking to Coach K last week, he wants Gary Trent to drive more, get to the basket. We all know he can shoot. 39% this season, but he also can do that. 10 of 26 thus far from three. Delorier with two hands. And that's what he does. Hustle plays, gets the steal. Showtime on the other end. Delorier has improved a ton. Bolden with the block on the attempted dunk from Mounts. Skip pass. Trent corner three. Got it! Timeout, Furman as the Blue Devils take a two-point lead. That's a classic Duke play there. They get a defensive block down there by Bolden protecting the rim. Crazies love it. Doesn't take much for this building to get going. You know that. We talked about this a little bit before the broadcast. And how about the job by Delorier? He's a perfect complimentary piece to what this team needs this year. Absolutely. You know, he doesn't shoot great. Doesn't drive to the basket great, but he's their best hustle player. Bolden with the block there. Delorier with the rebound, which he does really well. Grayson Allen finds Gary Trent. That's also what he does and knocks it down from the corner. Trent probably Duke's second best shooter, only behind Grayson Allen. Delorier set a career high in rebounds with 11 against Elon in Duke's season opener. Figures to get a lot more playing time this year, and that's the danger for the Paladins. You can play great basketball for more than seven minutes and in about a 15 second span, 20 second span, you lose the lead. You lose the lead and the energy is up in this building. The crazies are feeling it. Duke's got a lot, a lot of pace right now. Quick timeout for Coach Ritchie. Did not want to see that run get extended any farther than 7-0, which it is right now. It's going to be a foul on Grayson Allen. With a forearm to the back. Jalen Williams, 6'8", 240, backing down the Duke senior. Grayson played him tough. Coach K doesn't like it. You'll see that a lot. Come off a big run and you play aggressive and a little over aggressive there. Grayson hit him with a little chicken wing. Sometimes they'll let the guard get away with that because you're at a disadvantage size-wise, but a little too much that time from Allen. Oh, yeah, I know all about chicken wings. <laughs> you know. The ref can't see it. It's legal. <laughs> they don't call it, right? It's not a foul. Right. Unfortunately for Grayson Allen, they did call it that time. Williams misses the first from the free throw line. Peculiar motion there by Williams. Gets it up there. I watched him shoot a little bit from the perimeter and shoot around today. He doesn't leave the floor. Second one is good. Three for four now on the season for Williams, the biggest player on Furman's roster. Coach Ritchie saying he's going to have to play big for us tonight against that Duke front line. Allen is tripped by Fowler. First personal on Fowler. Second team foul for the Paladins. 
12.25 to go. Sideline out of bounds for the Blue Devils. And there's a closer look at Coach Ritchie. Had his team really relaxed at shoot-around earlier today. Really didn't do much in terms of structure. Just wanted the guys to have some fun, get some shots up, clear their mind for the challenge tonight. Yep, they've had a tough road here. Played Butler the other night. Just wanted to be relaxed coming into this game and play like themselves. Gary Trent makes up for the turnover by deflecting that pass. This is part of the PK-80 tournament. Duke will head out west for the latter stages. Furman with Butler and Duke. Then they'll go to Nashville for a couple of games. All that travel, Coach Ritchie said, look, we've just got to play easy, play free, have fun tonight. And Sibley's going to have a lot of fun if he continues to get to the rack. Yeah, and he's their best scorer. Can truly shoot the basketball, but can put it on the floor and get to the basket as well. Preseason mid-major All-American, Sibley. Looked like Beans might have picked up the foul that time. Under 12 to go. We'll take a break. Furman leading the Blue Devils 16-15. Paladins by one here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. 16-15, the under-12 timeout. Both of these teams in the PK-80 tournament honoring the 80th birthday of Phil Knight. The Nike legend, the founder. There you see what lies ahead potentially for the Blue Devils as they head out west. Furman will play New Hampshire and Northeastern in Nashville. That's a flight you're familiar with heading out to Portland. Your time with the Trailblazers. Some interesting potential matchups ahead for the Blue Devils. Oh, yeah. Portland, that flight tomorrow. There. I'm sorry, it's <laughs> not fun. It. Yeah. No, six plus hours. Uh, be a bit jet lag. How about the quick inbounds? Corner three from Goldwire. Carter on the offensive glass. He's fouled by Rafferty. It's exactly what Furman was hoping to avoid, although Richie didn't like the call. They practiced that in their shoot around today. Have some different motions going on. Found goal wire in the corner there, wide open because of the other action that was going on. Carter to the free throw line. Fourth team foul on the Paladins. Nobody with more than one. Carter makes the first. Wendell Carter Jr. now 15 of 22 from the free throw line on the season. Morgan Wooten, National Player of the Year in high school, the eighth. Player to win that award to end up at Duke. School with the next most, UCLA with three. Here's Davis. It's off to a good start. Two for three, four points. Couple of assists. Now it's Rafferty. Here is Sibley. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Step back jumper, long two for Sibley. Grabbed by Bagley and deflected out of bounds by Beans. Furman bench looking for a goaltend, and Bagley was way over top of the rim. Guess the refs didn't think so. If you're high enough, it might be hard to tell if it's over the right, cylinder. Right, you know, you got to look up that high, you don't know. <laughs> Duvall and Goldwire on the floor at the same time. Bagley, big man to big man. And one for Carter. Great finish there by Carter. But you've seen all year for Duke, these big men are willing passers. They look for each other, not selfish to score. They go high-low there and get the basket and one. Here's another look. Bagley to Carter. Not only willing, but very capable of making that pass. As Carter will look to finish the traditional three-point play. No good on the free throw, and Sibley the rebound. Skip pass, Brown. Rafferty trying to post up Carter. Here is Davis now. Davis gets the baseline, kicks it out for a three. No good from Fowler. Duvall tracks down the rebound. Goldwire trying to loft it up to Bagley. We'll head the other way. Goldwire trying to force feed it there. 
Yeah, that's what they're, they've looked for all season and have got it, but you got to take your time there and make sure Bagley's got his man sealed off. Rafferty will head to the bench. Dealt with a back injury last year, missed 17 games, full go in the preseason. All freshman team a couple of years ago, but he's got two fouls now with 10 and a half to go. First player for either team with more than one. That jump shot from Davis is good. He has been looking confident out here tonight. Now three of four from the field. Man, that's tough. Guy pressures you, drive him. I know a lot about those mid-range shots. Shoot him over top. It's a great shot there. The analytics folks don't love him, but Gerald Henderson does. Oh, I love him. <laughs> Here's Trent after another offensive rebound for the Blue Devils. Makes five now for Duke. Duval sends that one into Bagley. He's tied up. Possession arrow will stay with Duke. You can see at times it's not necessarily an accurate post entry. It's more of just a lofted pass in there and just let Bagley go in and get it. Yeah, I mean, these guys are so much shorter than the Duke players. Bagley will go up and get it up top. Grayson Allen finds some room, misses the three. Carter tries for the rebound, but it's Sibley. That comes away with it. And he'll get called for the double dribble. That's one Sibley will want back. Uh, you get that turnover or get that you know defensive rebound. They push the ball out. Had a shooter there on the wing. Just mishandled the basketball a bit. Those are the opportunities they're going to want here. Close score. Blue Devils by a point. Grayson Allen still looking for his first point. Bagley attacks the rim. Lefty finish no good. Carter there for the rebound and put back. Carter all over the glass. As I talked about in the beginning, when that shot goes up, you know, these Furman players are looking to block a shot. It's just not going to happen. You know, when the shot goes up, you got to hit Carter, put a body on him, take him away from rebounding position. Carter well on his way to double-double number three of his young career. Looking for Williams. Grayson Allen takes that one away. Duvall sends it ahead to Carter. Wendell Carter into double digits. Gotta love the way the big fella. Very versatile, but running the floor, trying to get rewarded on the other end, gets the easy dunk. 23-18 Duke. Largest lead of the night for the Blue Devils. Like Bagley was called for the push. The ball with his eyes ahead. Carter's got great hands, great feet, great jumping ability. Finishes there. And how many guys there would have traveled? Might not have taken that dribble. Carter, good body control there and a poised finish. Straight off the inbounds. Straight away three from Brown is no good. Paladin's hitting the offensive glass, but Williams is rejected by Bagley. Back the other way comes Duke. Grayson Allen into the paint. He won't get the continuation. But it'll be a foul on the Paladins. Well, maybe next year, if he's in the NBA, he yeah. may get that. That's a definite bucket. You watch Bagley playing one-on-one. -on -one. Defense, not the first thing they talk about when you talk about Bagley, but gets the block there and starts the transition for Grayson Allen. Fourth block of the year for Marvin Bagley, the third. Duke looking to extend its lead. Bagley posts up mounts. Goes to the left hand and the finish. It's a great touch there by Bagley. If Furman wanted to stop him from scoring in that position, you're going to have to come with a double team or at least look like your double team. He's a little too comfortable in that position. Paladin's just one of six from the three-point line. Sibley will try another, make it one for seven. Trent the rebound. Duvall can tell he was looking at Delorier. Instead, it's Bagley. Lefty jump hook finish. Another timeout for Furman. As the Blue Devils have stretched the lead to nine. Bagley's looking hungry down there in the paint. Always trying to get to that left hand. Found him there in transition. Nice move here to the middle. 
You'll see that as a replay all season long. Back at Cameron Indoor Stadium, 27-18 Blue Devils. We talked off the top about Coach Bob Ritchie and how his team was going to have to try to contain the paint, try to hold off that Duke front line. The Blue Devils starting to exert themselves now in that area, 22-12 in the paint, 8-0 run for the Blue Devils. Paladins haven't scored in almost three minutes, and you can tack on two more for Trayvon Duvall. For Furman, that's tough getting a turnover right over, right over a... Uh after a timeout. Duke bringing the pressure still. Davis gets to the rim and he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line and shoot his first free throws of the evening. As Duke has pushed its lead to double digits for the first time. You'll see as Davis gets to the basket there, that's what you got to do. If these guys are going to push up on you, it's hard to, to guard somebody out there 40 feet and just keep them in front of you, especially a small, quick guy like himself. You know, he'll find you can get to the basket or be able to find his shooters out on the perimeter when the guys, when Duke players help. Davis with the free throw, just the third free throw that Furman has shot thus far. And you would expect them to shoot a limited number given how many outside shots they take. Just over seven minutes left in the first half. ISO for Carter here. Bagley, the two-handed finish. Sorry, Bagley. And the spin move and the dunk. You don't see a lot of ISO plays in college. You don't see a lot of players in college like Marvin Bagley the third. Depending on what they do with the one-and-done rule, you may never see players yeah. like him again. Yeah, he's not supposed to be in college. Here's Fowler. And now Rafferty. Fowler again, five on the shot clock. A nice look down low, the kick out. Sibley three. Didn't draw anything, and it'll be a shot clock violation for the Paladins. Not a horrible shot there for Furman. Sibley just rushed it a bit. I think the crazies were counting down a bit early on. He was counting their countdown instead of the shot clock. Under six and a half to go. Blue Devils by 11. Balance, Same play. Yeah, balanced scoring for Duke. Bagley's got it going, was without a field goal for about the first seven or eight minutes, but he's turned it on here as of late. Up to eight points on four of seven from the field. That one rolls off the front rim, and Bagley scores on both ends. Tipped it in there, but hey, Duke's going to go right back to that same play. They can't stop it, keep going to it. Bagley tries the jump shot this time, showing the entire arsenal. Davis into the lane. Tries the shoulder fake on Duvall. Fadeaway jump shot is good. Ten points for John Davis, the third. I like Davis. He's got an array of moves. And look here, Duke's going back. To, oh. Should have gone back to the same play. I think, I think Bagley's tired. Grayson Allen, high off the glass, no good. Here comes Davis again. Has Brown to his right. Stop and pop three. That one is short, and Bagley grabs it off the rim. Watch Bagley. It took him about 12 seconds to get down the court there on defense. He's a little gassed after just running the same play. Tries a three. It's off the heel. Duvall. Beats three different Furman players for the rebound. Grayson Allen will try a three. That one is good. Offensive rebound leads to a Duke three. That's a classic Duke play there. Getting down toward four and a half to go. Duke shooting 59% from the field. A rare size advantage for the Paladins. That one's off the rim. Rafferty gets the offensive rebound. Brown hesitated on the three. Eventually it ends up with Davis. Good and that pass. time Rafferty the finish down low. Foreman players trying to take their time. Davis finds Rafferty right under the basket. Thirty-nine twenty-six. 
Blue Devils looking to go 5-0. and Furman looking for a 3-1 and start to their 2017-18 campaign. Floater from Duval is good. Exploring the paint and then the righty finish. Duke switching one through four out on the perimeter. See if Rafferty can take advantage of the smaller Duval. Not to be that time. And Bagley grabs the rebound. Marvin Bagley the third, the first freshman in Duke history to post consecutive double-doubles to open a career. The lofted pass to Delorier and the foul. Got to love that pace by Duvall right there. Comes off the screen and roll, probes a little bit, finds Delorier with the finish and one. 43-26 Blue Devils. Javin Delorier the latest finish. She'll try to finish off the three-point play when we return. An indoor stadium and Marvin Bagley the third showing the whole arsenal tonight. Duke Iso hit him on that elbow for several plays in a row. Got to his spin move, shoots the floater here on a left-handed drive, and then gives us the three from outside. Young fella saying it's over. And yeah, college will be over in another six, <laughs> seven months, that's for sure. <laughs> it may have been referring to the game, but I think you're right. 3.13 to go in the first half. Bagley up to 11. He broke the scoring record for a freshman debut with 25 against Elon. Tied the record for rebounds in a debut. Phenomenal start to what figures to be an impressive campaign for Marvin Bagley the third. Delorier at the free throw line. She looks to finish off the three-point play. Short. Bolden. That one will be a jump ball and belong to Furman. We've talked about in previous games. Duke's trying to find time for Bolden here. He's got to figure out ways to seize his opportunities. Uh, free throw is an opportunity for him. He's not going to get any plays run for him. So attacking the glass, even on a free throw, is a big time play for him. Gets Duke a the possession arrow. Yeah, that's one of those you don't see dividends right away, but the next jump ball now belongs to Duke. That three-pointer is good from Mounts. That's what Furman needs, the three ball, if they're going to get back in this one. Looking for Bolden down low over that left shoulder, finishing through contact. There you go. He gets a play run for him there, takes his time, gets to his left-handed finish there in the lane. Here is Davis, 10 points, 4 assists already on the evening for the senior from Beachwood, Ohio. Goldwire is going to be called for the reach-in. That's the pressure Duke wants, though. Goldwire on the basketball. They don't want to reach and foul. But they've been playing aggressively on the perimeter the entire game. That's how they want to play this three-point shoot in Furman team. Yeah, not the foul you wanted to give, but Duke had a couple to play with. Just five now on the team. So still two away from the bonus. Here's Sibley. Sibley with four points thus far. A nice look that time to Fowler. It ends up with last year's conference player of the year in the Southern Conference. Five seconds on the shot clock. Furman has come up with a couple of buckets in late shot clock scenarios. Just barely gets it off that time. And Bagley clears the glass. Quick hit ahead, Grayson Allen steps into a three, no good. Bagley the rebound. And that one is going to be taken by Davis on the rebound. Elbow jump shot. And Davis continues to impress. I love Davis's pace. Very under control, can really handle the basketball. He comes off that small screen there at the three-point line, gets to his pull-up. He knows how to play against pressure. The senior. Bagley finds Grayson Allen, wing three, in and out. Rebounded by who else? Davis. He's doing it all tonight for Furman. He's greeted by Trent at the foul line. Minute 15 to go. 
You can see why Furman was picked to finish first in their league, hoping to go back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1980. That's when Furman set the school record with 23 wins. That was matched last year. The Paladins tied a school record with 23. School record tying 14 conference wins. One of the best seasons in program history as Williams calls timeout. So Furman has used three timeouts here in the first half. A minute 13 to go. We'll see what coach Bob Ritchie draws up. What do you like here, Gerald, if you're Coach Ritchie? Davis has been a guy that's made a lot happen for the Paladins thus far tonight. My guess would be maybe a pick and roll right up top in the middle where he's he's done well. He's got into the lane. He's got to his pull-up. Shoot the ball pretty well right now. Players return to the floor. It'll be Fowler on the inbound as Trent watches him. 18 on the shot clock. Got to get the ball in first here. That was dangerous. Now Fowler. Bolden bounces off of Fowler, but that bounces off the rim. Grayson Allen does a push-up in the middle of the play. 50 seconds left in the first half. Lobs that one up to Bolden. Can't quite finish. And that's because he was fouled, and Marquise Bolden grabs his back. You wonder if he tweaked something there as he tried to finish through contact. Goes up here. Probably one he should, should, just should have grabbed and brought down. He could have dunked it, grabbing his back. May have strained it a bit. I think he hit the backboard with the ball. Brought him out of his body a little bit. Big fellow be okay. Bolden's first free throw of the night is good. Just the seventh free throw attempt of the year for Marquise Bolden. He hits both. Let's see if the Paladins try to go two for one here at the end of the first half. Don't see it as much in college as you do in the pros. In the NBA, it's basically a given going two for one. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I was going to ask you if they do that in college, <laughs> but smart play there. Coach Ritchie wants his team to get into their offense. Here's Mounts into the lane. That one is swatted away by Delorier. Whoa. Get a switch there at the free throw line. Javin following the play, comes from behind. Just sized him up from three or four steps away. That kid plays with so much energy. He knows that's his strength. You know, he comes out every night, plays with energy. You're never going to have a, a problem with him from an excitement level coming out there and playing every single night. Referees taking a look. I wonder if they're looking at if there was anything after the play. Obviously, Delorier making contact. Mounts goes up. Delorier with the swat. Then the arm just, I think, happens to be up around the head and neck area. I don't think there's anything intentional there. Yeah, if anything, it's just inadvertent contact as he goes down. It's always so hard to tell, though, the emphasis on arms and hands around the head and neck area. The rule is incidental contact, and I think that's the right call. Yep, that's what I would say as well. Eight seconds on the shot clock, 24.4 on the game clock. Delorier guarding Fowler. Fowler gets himself a little bit of space in the lane. Tipped a couple of times. About five or six times. Grayson Allen eventually tracks it down, and Dukes got 10 seconds left in the first half. As the Blue Devils call timeout. 
Coach K wanted them to call it a little bit earlier so they could have more time to work with. And that timeout's got to be called on the court. Yeah. So Grayson Allen does make the call. 47 to 31. My guess here is we'll get Duvall, maybe Bagley, and a screen and roll up top. Get him to maybe penetrate. Find Bagley on the roll. Or Grayson Allen on a kickback for three. That's my guess. You would know. You've been in the locker room. You've been in the huddle. Yeah, well, that's what's working. Or, or Coach K maybe goes to that elbow iso with Bagley. Trying to pick his brain. At halftime, we'll take a look at some of the size differential between these two teams and flip over to soccer for just a bit. Both Duke soccer teams advancing in the NCAA tournament. Women's program back at the quarterfinals. But for now, a little less than 11 seconds for the men's basketball team. Berman in the zone, looks like here. Duvall, fancy dribbles in the righty finish. Doesn't matter. Busts the zone, does Trayvon Duvall. Does he get the three off in time? Don't know if it would have counted. Doesn't matter. Sibley misses the three. 49-31 for the Blue Devils at half. Trayvon Duvall getting to the basket right there at the end of the half. That's a great way to end the first half for the Blue Devils. You see him here. Busting right through the zone between the legs. No backboard. Duke up 49-31 at half. Blue Devils by 18 at halftime. As we return to Cameron Indoor Stadium, taking a look outside of basketball for just a moment. Basketball season just getting started. The soccer season is wrapping up into the NCAA tournament on both the men's and women's side. Imani Dorsey with the finish for the Blue Devils. The Big 12 sweep for Duke this past weekend in rounds number two and three to advance to the quarterfinals. Monty Dorsey and Kayla McCoy, each with 13 goals on the season. Taylor Rassiope provides the finishing touch as Duke shuts out the Longhorns 3-0 to advance into the final eight. And in their quarter of the bracket, they've gotten some help. Both of the other seeds have lost. So it'll be Duke and Baylor. Defending champion Southern Cal could have been there, but they went down, as did Texas A&M. The two and three seeds both, so it's the Bears, the Big 12 tournament champions that Duke will play for a chance to advance to the College Cup. There you see the rest of the bracket as well. Stanford having an outstanding year, as always, looking for yet another national championship. On the men's side, the tournament about a round behind, and so Duke looking to advance into the 16s. Max Moser, the first goal of his career, coming off the free kick as Duke took the 1-0 lead over Florida International. Christopher Goodarson, the international, finishes that one, just freezing the goalkeeper to give Duke an insurance goal. Panthers would get one back to make it 2-1, and this one was emotional at the end. Yellow cards galore, but the Blue Devils would eventually hang on for the victory and advance to round number three, where they would have hosted Virginia, the team that Duke knocked off 1-0 in the regular season finale, but the Cavaliers were upset by Fordham, so instead the Blue Devils will play a team they beat 3-0 earlier in the year for an opportunity to advance to the quarterfinals. Duke looking to make a run back in the tournament for the first time since 2011. Got a bye in the first round and then got the win over FIU. On the other side of the break, we'll take a look at how Duke accrued its 18-point lead over the Paladins. Plenty more to come from Cameron Indoor Stadium on ACC Network Extra. Back in Cameron Indoor Stadium where the Blue Devils lead Furman by 18 alongside Gerald Henderson. I'm Ryan Craig, and one of the reasons why Duke has been able to extend that margin is because Furman simply has not hit shots from the three-point line. Well, that's what they do. They shoot three-pointers, only two for 11 in the first half. Their best player, Devin Sibley, only five points. Uh, they need to get going. Brown has been able to get into the, into the paint, needs to find shooters out on the outside, and they got to knock him down. And John Davis has been a positive for the Paladins as well. He's got a dozen points, a bunch of rebounds and assists as well. And he's created quite a bit for Furman on the inside to allow them to have the success they have had thus far on the offensive end. 
Well, he's got experience. He's been coming off a lot of pick and rolls, finding his way into the perimeter, either each of the paint either to get to the basket or get to his pull-up shot. He's looked very composed, not rattled. He's got to sprinkle that over to some of his teammates. One of the main storylines going into the game that we talked about right off the top, and Furman was able to stay in this game when they were containing Duke on the inside, but Wendell Carter started to find the range. Marvin Bagley III took over as Duke was continually running plays for him on the elbow. Those two have combined for 21 points and nine rebounds in the first half as Duke has started to own the boards. A plus seven right now at halftime. Well, Duke's hit them on post-ups. Those big guys have been running the floor. They've been attacking the offensive glass. That's how they're going to play. You know, it's, it's very simple. I've always felt big men have it out a little bit easier than the guards. <laughs> you know, go, you know, chasing guys around or whatnot, but they've been able to get to the basket and use their size tonight against Furman. Duke not shooting the three particularly well either, but the Blue Devils have a plan B, whereas the Paladins really don't. 34, 18 points in the paint, so Duke, despite missing seven out of 10 threes, can score almost half a hundred in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, we thought from the beginning of the season, the Blue Devils wouldn't be a great three-point shooting team. And on a night like tonight, not shooting it great, only three for 10, but now their strength down in the paint, their big men have showed out tonight so far. We talked about both of these teams being in the PK-80. We'll take a look at the bracket on the other side of the break. Both teams warming up for half number two here in Cameron. Forty-nine, thirty-one. Blue Devils, part of the PK-80, as we've mentioned, honoring Phil Knight's 80th birthday. Another quick look at the bracket we showed you before. Blue Devils will take on Portland State when they arrive on the West Coast. Up next for Furman, New Hampshire, as they'll head to Nashville for the second portion of their tournament. Look at that field, stacked out there in Portland. And here's a continuation of the storyline that has really been the difference to this point. We talked about how both teams are struggling to shoot the three, and so it's been what Duke's been able to do inside that's made a difference, and this is one of the reasons why Huge size advantage. And Duke's used every inch of it in that first half. You know, it's in talking to Coach Richie yesterday, he said, look, there's nothing we're going to be able to do about their size. There's nothing we're going to be able to do about their talent. We just need to play our game. But one thing they didn't do well in that first half is get on the defensive, defensive boards. That's what we talked about as one of the keys. Look for them from the start. Like I said, shot goes up. Hit somebody, then go grab the basketball. Duke will have possession to start the second half. That post-entry pass from Bagley was too short. Trent tracks back for the turnover, and Grayson, the finish on the other end. Back tap there by Carter. Good pass ahead to Grayson for the finish. Brown finds himself Face up with Bagley in the paint, so he kicks it out. Here's Rafferty. Now Davis, who's been Furman's best player, has a teammate fall into him as he was taking the three. And that one is rebounded by Trent. 20-point lead for the Blue Devils. Duvall, the fallaway jumper. He adds that to his game. I have no idea how you guard him. Yeah, it's tough. He's got such speed going to the basket. And teams are going to give him that shot. He's so quick and so good at passing when he gets the interior. He's going to have that shot a lot this year. Sibley trying to get untracked. Staring down Carter. And hits a three. It's a good start for him. Only five points in the first half. Farman's best score. See if he can heat up a bit here in the second half. Again, averaged almost 18 a game last season. Is at 19 flat this year. Duval corner three. That one's off the rim. Carter in among four different Paladins. Earns the tie-up. Big fella getting himself on the ground there. To get that loose ball. Gary Trent gets his hand on that ball. Head to Grayson Allen. Freaks it a little bit, puts it on his shoulder. <laughs> Throws it through. I like that. 
style points. You know, they call him, they call him G now. It's like how quickly they forget. I told John Shire, he always gets a mention in our telecast. Yes, he does. Hey, look, when we're in the same room, man, <laughs> I call him Grayson. Respect your elders. Exactly. Grayson's called for the foul. A couple of All-Americans, the nickname G. Pass the torch, man. You Absolutely. got to. Absolutely. Fowler, sideline out of bounds. Just about two minutes into the second half. Herman trying to make some inroads. And it is nearly 20 point deficit. Here is Davis, gets Duvall in the air. Looks for Rafferty. Quick hit ahead, Grayson to Gary Trent. Good turnovers leading to Duke's fast break. The live ball turnovers, Duke has been devastating this season. 55-34. Rafferty dealing with Trent. And now Carter backs him into the lane. Kick out for three, Brown. There's an offensive rebound for the Paladins. Davis into the paint, draws the foul. It's another one on Grayson Allen. That'll be his third personal, first Blue Devil with three. Rafferty with three for Furman. Take another look at the foul. He's been aggressive all night. Goes right at Grayson Allen. Draws the foul. Sibley's their best scorer, but not tonight. Davis has been attacking the basket, getting to his jump shot as well. That's quite the combination, the backcourt for Furman in the Southern Conference with Davis and Sibley. They're going to be a handful. Oh, yeah. Number 17. In the mid-major top 25. And experienced guys as well. Both seniors. This is a team on an upward trajectory. 19 wins two years ago. Made it to the CIT second round. 23 wins. We already mentioned tying a school record last year. Made it to the semifinals of the CIT. And looking the part very much of a team that could win its conference title and get into the NCAA tournament as Bagley draws the foul. So Duke's run that ISO play on an elbow for Bagley at least five to six times now. If you're Furman, you got to stop him from getting to his left hand. I know it's easier said than done, but shade him to his right. See, see what he can go do get going towards the middle. Second foul on Fowler as Mounts checks back in. Bagley good on the first free throw. Tough to find fault in a 4-0 start, including a neutral site win over the number two team in the country. But free throw shooting has been a bit of an issue for the Blue Devils. Grayson Allen shooting them at 92%. But even with that, Duke only shooting 61% as a team. Yeah, if you're going to give it to your big man, down low and they're going to be aggressive they got to be able to knock down free throws that's something you can easily work in. it takes no effort just go in the gym you can go by yourself just keep repetition nice look from carter and delorier the finish largest lead of the night for duke at 22 59 37 and there's davis another finish in the lane 15 to go with three rebounds and four assists in 23 minutes for the senior. Not rattled at all. No. From the first whistle, he has looked like he has belonged on the floor here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Bagley guarded by Mounts. Gets to that left hand in the paint and finishes his own miss. That's another replay there. Bagley, he's got great touch, but when somehow he knows when he's going to miss, he goes right back up like a pogo stick. He's got incredible bounce. That second jump, so quick off the floor. 15 and 6 now for Bagley. Rebound by Brown, a long rebound. As Trent fouls 
Sibley. Under 16, Blue Devils 61, Furman 39. Wendell Carter finds DeLaurier on the slash there. Always bringing energy, nice finish. Emphatically Bagley as well. Marvin Bagley, the third, up to 15 points. Half a dozen rebounds. This Duke surfing toward a 5-0 start with under 16 minutes to play. Near Cameron Indoor Stadium. Looking to push their non-conference winning streak on this floor to 136. Second longest active streak in America, 45 belonging to Baylor. I had my hand in a few of those wins. Yes, you did. They were a lot of fun. Any, any close ones? Any fear of the streak ending? Not that I remember. <laughs> Not that you'd admit to it if there was. Davis with six on the shot clock. Falling away with the jumper. The rebounded, the rebound, excuse me, by Mounts. Here comes Duval across midcourt. Duke is 266 and three in their last 269 non-conference home games. Carter looking for Bagley, intercepted by Mounts. Back comes Davis. See if Sibley can hit the three. Can't do it. Bagley comes away with his eighth rebound. As he closes in on his fourth career double-double in five games. He's done it efficiently, especially tonight. Six for 12 field goals, 50% from the field. And that was after a tough start. Really found his rhythm. Carter just sheds a defender and draws the foul. And Rafferty called for his fourth foul. Looking at the ref, like, hey, he fouled me, man. Yeah. He almost took my arm off. Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough break where you get called for the foul and you get the worst of the contact. Gary Trent in front of the Duke bench. Into the lane. DeLaurier leans in for the rebound. Trent with that long two. Rebounded by Jalen Williams. Fourth rebound for Williams. Kick out for three. DeLaurier the rebound. And Davis might have tried for the layup. Saw Bagley there, though. Yeah, took it back out. Smart play. Carter called for steps. Game a little stale right now. Yes, that's a great call. No team's in a great rhythm. Even the crowd, you can tell the energy. 13 and a half to go. The margin is 22. Grayson Allen getting ready to check back in with three fouls. Same with Jordan Goldwire. It's a dangerous time. It's a nice look there in the finish by Mounts inside. Furman still playing, running their offense. Just saying, this is a dangerous time as, you know, Duke's up 20 points right now, but Furman, a three-point shooting team, can easily get back into the game. Duval with the bucket. Fowler with that nice look. On the last play, 0 for 7 from the field. He has struggled tonight, looking to make an impact in other ways. Here he is again. He'll make it 0 for 8 for the senior from Georgia. Rebound by Delorier. He'll slow things down for a moment. Duval lays it off. Two hands from Marvin Bagley the third. We've seen that over and over with Duval early in this season. A little shake and bake, gets to the basket. Very willing passer. He can score the basketball too, but loves to give it up. Third assist on the night for Trayvon Duvall. Talked about him leading all freshmen with 34 assists coming into the evening. Here's Davis. That one was altered, I think, by Delorier. The foul is called. 
And we reach the under 12 timeout. 65 41 Blue Devils. Duval getting it done. Goes to the basket, finds Bagley. Where else would he be? Right in front of the rim, gets the finish. Tuesday on ESPN, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings at 7 p.m. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom. We'll have coaches' reactions as well as a live interview with committee chairman Kirby Hocutt. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. Two ACC teams, boys for the college football playoff, perhaps Clemson and Miami. Whoever loses the ACC championship game, especially if it's Miami, still has a pretty good shot to make it in that top four. A foul. And then Jordan Goldwire taking it out of bounds. How about my Eagles last night? Yeah, they are getting it done. The best team in the NFL right there. How about that draft pick? That quarterback's turned out to be pretty good. Oh, yeah. Cleveland Browns maybe wish they had Wentz. They love him in Philly. How about the dump off from Grayson Allen to Marvin Bagley? Bagley right at the rim again. Grayson Allen with the penetration. Unselfish. He could have shot his little floater there, one-handed runner. Gave it up. Just five points on the night for Grayson Allen, but three rebounds and five assists. Bagley, a point and two rebounds away from another 2010 game. Duval, seven of ten from the field, 14 points. We take another look at the finish from the freshman. It's easy, man. Right at the basket. Lead is 26, make it 24 as Fowler finds a basket for the first time tonight. Preseason all-conference, 19 points against Butler. Three for three from the three-point line against the Bulldogs. Has not had the same game tonight. Grayson Allen short on that jump shot. Sibley got caught in the air for a second. Here's Fowler. Nice look down low to Sibley. Two different Blue Devils collapse on him and force the turnover. Grayson Allen breaks forward. O'Connell onto the floor. O'Connell with the bucket. Grayson found O'Connell in transition. Nice ball fake. Very poised. Didn't look like a freshman right there. Coach K loves the energy that O'Connell brings to the floor. Got more bounce than you would expect as well. Here's Goldwire into the front court. Has that one poked away. Sibley the other way. Nothing but net for Jordan Lyons. His first three. He comes off the bench with a scores mentality. He definitely shoot the basketball. Bagley posting up Fowler. Fowler does a nice job to make him pick up his dribble. Eight seconds. Bagley draws contact from a couple of Paladins. The call will be on Fowler. It's his third. I said a few minutes ago, Bagley catches it on the elbow, forced him right. Well, there he went right. Gets to the basket and draws a foul. I think so. you're totally right. It's... Everybody knows what they want to do. Right. Just whether you can do it or not. I'm sure you played against plenty of guys. You have to defend some of the best players in the world. You know what they're trying to do. You know, you got to play them aggressively, kind of guess a little bit, know what they want to get to. But look, a, a score is a score. They'll figure out a way to get it in the basket. Good defenders rely a lot on luck. <laughs> don't, don't ever get that confused. Bagley will take a seat. Under nine and a half to go, 70-46 the score. Duke shooting over 64% here in the second half, 60% even for the game. Both teams 
Less than 30% from three, but that has much more of an effect on the Paladins than it does the Blue Devils. And then the walk that time from Matt Rafferty will turn it over. Rafferty was actually a high school quarterback at 6'8". Trying to use some of that same vision that time, but couldn't quite get the, the footwork. Carter facing up Beans. Fowler over to double. O'Connell finds Grayson Allen in the corner. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Great find. Spots up for three. The freshman showing poise there at the end of the shot clock. Goldwire finds O'Connell, who made his way back out to the perimeter after that pass. Yeah, that's it. He was well out of bounds after throwing that pass in the corner and found his way back for that wing three. Goldwire finds him. Five quick points for O'Connell. And then the three by Fowler as he starts to find the range with about eight minutes to go. Looking for Bolden down low. Won't get the finish, but he'll go to the line. Another foul on Fowler. It'll be four on him. Alex O'Connell on to the floor and on to the score sheet. Good energy from the freshman early. Shot fake. Get your man in the air. Finish. The freshman's ready to play tonight. Knocks down the three. Blue Devils four for 12 from the three-point line, so add another number to that streak. Now 989 straight games with a made three. This is a Duke team that's not going to rely on the three-pointer as much as they have in the past because they have guys like Wendell Carter that can finish on the inside. Yeah, Coach K is all about playing to your strengths. But on a Duke basketball team, you're always going to be able to shoot threes. Great advantage when you can have a big guy that can finish like that. Duke had hit at least five in 41 straight games before a 4-for-20 effort against Southern. 4-for-12 tonight, but... Wendell Carter and company getting it done inside. Up to 12 points now for Wendell Carter Jr. You talk about that streak. Coach K has always been a big advocate of shooting your bullets. Getting down the floor, always have your feet set, hands ready to shoot the basketball. Even me, I couldn't even shoot threes that well in college. <laughs> he let me let him, let him fly. 75-49. Yeah, you had that long two. That was your yep. step inside the three-point line. Old school game. That's right. The finish inside from Rafferty. High with the baby hook. That's how you beat the size. Put it over the big man's arms. Nice touch there by Rafferty. Somewhat quiet night for Grayson Allen, although he's got it done in different ways than usual. Six assists for the senior captain. Five points on two of nine from the field, and he'll take a seat, maybe for good. 7.05 to go. See if he comes back or not. Blue Devils leading by 24. Carter posting up bounce. Trent steps into a three. Carter the rebound. Can't get the finish. There's O'Connell finding Bolden down low. Marquise Bolden, six points on the night. Big fella holding his ground. Getting it over top of two Furman defenders. Strong finish. It's another play made by O'Connell. He's had an energetic five minutes on the floor. Rafferty steps into a three. Goldwire the three. O'Connell the rebound and the finish. He is earning himself some more playing time. Yeah, we talked about it. 
at the break. The kicker can just play. He knows how to play. He can put the ball on the floor, shoot it, pass it. There gets the offensive rebound. He just plays with a lot of energy. Seven points, a couple of rebounds, and assist in six minutes. Davis misses the three. Carter over Rafferty for the rebound. Trent looking for O'Connell. Finds him. Corner three. Bolden hitting the glass. Never got the sense that Trent was in rhythm on that shot. As Davis comes back the other way. Brown into the paint. Nice dish. Rafferty can't convert. And then rebound for Bolden. Seen that a few times at the basket. Very much concerned with Duke's size getting his shot blocked. Duke has six blocks on the night. That one's poked away by Mounts. 56-28. Duke doubling up the Paladins in the paint. And that's been the story tonight. 79-54 Blue Devils. Looking to go 5-0 early in the 2017-18 campaign. Tonight after Monday Night Football, stay with ESPN for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. He'll break down the Legion of Boom's performance minus Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas not there. I don't know how much of a Legion of Boom it is anymore, but regardless, they'll break down the matchup with the Seahawks, plus an exclusive interview with Cam Newton. And on the five-year anniversary of the butt fumble, Katie Nolan continues the countdown of the best not-top plays of all time. Sports Center at night with SVP on ESPN and the ESPN app. This is a guy that could have some Sports Center top 10. Forget the not top 10. He's shown some ability here against the Paladins and in the early going in his freshman campaign. Bagley, the lefty hook shot, he'll be fouled. You know, a guy like O'Connell comes in, everybody else around him with all the accolades and He's kind of quietly gone about his business and earned some playing time on the consensus number one team in America. Yeah, well, he's got a quiet confidence about him. I mentioned all the things he can do, drive, pass, shoot. The kid can also get up, too. He's got some bounce to him. He plays with a, a high level of energy. We mentioned, you know, given a different Duke team, he may get some more playing time. Look next year for him to be out here a lot more. Some question as to who the foul was on, I believe. First free throw from Bagley is good. It's a good sign for him, four for five from the free throw line. Bagley came in shooting seven of 18 from the charity stripe, under 40%. It seems to have found the rhythm here a bit. Good on the second as well, and that's a guy, Gerald, you touched on a little bit before. He's going to spend a lot of time at the free throw line this year. Oh, yeah, he can put the ball in the basket. Loves getting to the basket around the rim, so his teams just aren't going to let him score. Fowler playing with four fouls. Here's Davis. In and out. Rebounded by Williams. That one doesn't go. Williams fights for the rebound again. May have hit his head on the floor. Oh, that kid's tough. Absolutely. The tie-up. Timeout, actually, instead. The last timeout for the Paladins. So you get Carved some look. space yeah. there. Deloria gets the block. Good hustle play by him. Six rebounds on the night for Williams. Mentioned before, the Paladins picked to finish first in the Southern Conference by the media, third by the coaches. Mercer actually picked to finish first by the coaches. They bring all five starters back, but that's the media poll there, and the Paladins, eight of the first place votes. Quite a bit of balance. In that league, a lot of returning players. Furman with technically four starters back. But when Rafferty went down, allowed a lot of other guys to get time. And so in essence, with Andrew Brown getting all the starts last year after Rafferty's departure, really five 
returning starters, five guys that played quite a bit for Coach Bob Ritchie. And at the time, Nico Nedved, who was the head coach, now at Drake. Ritchie on staff. Looking to continue the positive momentum for that program. That's what you want to do when you're trying to build a culture and build a program is every year. Maybe get to a different postseason tournament, increase the number of wins. And he's a great guy to talk to. And he's a guy you'd love to play for. Yeah, talk to him today at shoot around. Yep. Just a nice guy. Just excited about his program. Excited about coming here to Duke and playing in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Excited for his players. You know, wasn't wasn't taking I say take the game serious, but wanted to have a good time, wanted this to be a good experience for his players, knowing that no matter the outcome of tonight's game, they got a good season lined up ahead of them. A couple of games on the road in Nashville, as we mentioned, and they'll head home for five games in a row. November 29, and then early to mid-December, Winthrop, Tennessee Tech, UNC Asheville, South Carolina State, Montreat, all on ESPN3. Paladins have not gotten a lot from Sibley tonight. Got to figure that won't last long. Fowler, another three. And they get Davis, Sibley, and Fowler going. Some complimentary pieces. That's a handful for a lot of teams in the Southern Conference. Duval whips that one to Bagley. A lot of contact from Williams. The jump shot falls. Gets contact there. Looked like a foul. Absorbs it. Puts it in the basket. Davis directing traffic. Three and a half minutes to go. Five seconds on the shot clock. There's a three from Sibley. Davis making all the right decisions. He understands he's a little guy. Not going to throw up a shot that'll get blocked or inadvertent. Gets in there and makes the right play. Duvall with the righty finish with Mounts guarding him. And Davis is really the point man for Furman on defense. Clearly runs the show on offense. 15 points, half a dozen assists. Just two turnovers. A timeout for Duke. For some substitutions, 2.52 to go. Furman will make some changes as well. Alex Hunter from Raleigh, North Carolina comes on. He's been on the court for four minutes thus far. Local product getting some time. He's a guy that's developed some trust with the coaching staff early in his career. Perhaps not expected to play a ton, but earn some minutes, and that guy's going to play minutes regardless of which team he's on, regardless of what level he's playing on. Trayvon Duvall, 18 on the night. And the three from Hunter. Duvall, an efficient nine for 12 on the night. Of the three shots he's missed, two of them have been three-pointers. Connell to Vrankovic. Back for three. Four for five from the field. A couple of threes for O'Connell. He's got ten points in ten minutes. Yeah, ready to play right when he came in the game. Lions thought about a three. Hunter in and out. Carter the rebound. Eighth of the evening for him. Carter sized up the three. Spins over that left shoulder. Righty finish for the freshman. Now that's rare. You know, we've seen how good he is down there. But being able to recognize where he was on the floor, get his feet under him, and get right to that right-handed hook. You don't see that with freshmen. Now you and I have called quite a few games together now for Duke. And 
I think one of the times you were saying that people may not realize these are not moves and plays that you typically see at the college level. The polish that Bagley and Carter have as freshmen in the post is impressive. Yeah, we've, we've got accustomed to it now. We've seen them four or five times now in the season, but that ability to recognize who's around you, not force up a shot, but then also realize when there's too many people around you. All Duke big men this year have been willing passers. Justin Robinson checks in for the Blue Devils. Steve Stavroff and Brady Shuck on for Furman, getting some time here at Cameron Indoor. That one off the shoulder of Jack White with 57.3 to go. And Duke is on its way to a 5-0 start. Against a game Paladin team. They'll carry some momentum with them. A better performance this evening than against Southern as Duke heads toward the West Coast. Yeah, I'd say they came ready to play. Got back on the right track as they head to Portland tomorrow. They'll have some good momentum. I think Furman will carry some momentum into Nashville as well, especially with John Davis III playing the way he did tonight, running their offense. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well, especially from distance, just 9 of 28. But got to figure that'll change with the type of shooters the Paladins have as they possess it in the final 30 seconds. Gene with a three. Carter will grab his ninth and final rebound. And the Blue Devils are going to win this one 92 to 63. Good win tonight by Duke. You figure they'll take this momentum as they travel tomorrow. Long road trip heading west for Thanksgiving. Both of these teams really. Blue Devils a couple of time zones away. Furman to Nashville as we've mentioned. All part of the PK80. Coach K and Coach Richie shake hands at midcourt. Win number 1003 at Duke for Mike Krzyzewski. 18 points for Trayvon Duvall, four rebounds, four assists. And then the bigs for Duke combining for 38 points, 17 rebounds, taking over at times tonight. They all play great. This is what you need as they go into Thanksgiving here, the Thanksgiving tournament. You want everybody running on all cylinders. Everyone play with a lot of energy tonight. Got back to playing Duke basketball. For Gerald Henderson, I'm Ryan Craig. Sing so long from Durham, Duke 92, Furman 63. To watch this entire game on replay, Go to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.